Hello, I'm Michael Teague, Chief System Engineer for Montano Collaborations. At Montano, we design and manufacture custom robots for a variety of industrial applications. Today, we will be talking about how we used Simulink to model various aspects of the performance of our latest robot, the Canary, a robot designed for hazardous duty in mining operations. Here's the model of our robot in Simulink. We have the motors that raise and lower the scoop, the servo that opens and closes the bucket, and the motors that drive the wheels of the robot. We also used a modified version of the provided field simulator to model the robot's motion with the wheels. Along with each component, we have the control software and MATLAB function blocks translated from Robot C. As an example, here's code that controls the servo on the bucket. By putting the code in the model, we were able to demonstrate its functionality and provide some level of debugging. However, we wanted to go further and use the model to inform decisions about our robot, because that is the real power of using simulations during design. Therefore, we set out to see what we could learn about the body size and wheel size. To accomplish this, we needed to place our robot in a model of the game field. We created a simplified 3D model using Autodesk Maya because the step files provided by BEST were too large for our computers. We then exported the Maya model to VRML, which could be imported into Simulink using VRealm Builder. To connect the elements together, we created state machines to provide user inputs to the controller. Here is one of our state machines. Then we used a VR sync block to connect the robot model to the 3D field so that we can display the results. We started by looking at the maneuverability of the robot. You can see in the simulation that our original base was too large to maneuver easily through the crooked tunnel. See how the body of the robot protrudes through the cave walls. We built a prototype of the larger base and proved that the model was correct. We then went with a smaller body, which is shown here, to maneuver easily through the tunnel. Next, we evaluated different wheel sizes as they pertain to speed. We simulated the robot obtaining commodities and repairing the pipe according to our strategy. We selected a wheel size of 8.5 inches with the large motors because this got us to sublevel 3 in approximately 15 seconds. I hope we have demonstrated the value of using Simulink to run simulations during the design phase. For more information about Montano Collaborations and Best Robotics, please see our website or check us out at the social media links in the description below. Thank you.